Hello everyone and welcome back. So far we have seen two of the cache memory mapping techniques, direct and associative mapping. Today we are going to learn about the most popular and widely used cache memory mapping technique that is set associative mapping. So before diving straight into the technicalities of this mapping policy, we will first try to understand the emergence of it and eventually by the end of this session, we will observe the reason behind its widespread acceptance with the help of an illustration. It's my recommendation to all of you, please go through the previous discussions on cache memory mapping techniques before continuing with this session. So, let's get to learning. During our discussion on direct mapping in session number 8, we came to know about its strict mapping policy. That is, Looking at the physical address bits using the PS splits line number bits portion, we could easily figure out to which cache line the main memory block is supposed to be mapped onto. Then again, in session number 13, we learned that it badly suffers from conflict mess. On the other hand, during presentation number 14, we witnessed that associative mapping was too flexible because we could map any of the main memory block to any of the cache lines. This solved the conflict miss problem definitely. However, due to the need of the comparators for every single cache line, the cost of the implementation became too high. In these circumstances, the developers had to come up with a new cache memory mapping technique, combining the advantages of strict direct memory mapping where easy retrieval of the main memory block from the cache was guaranteed and the flexible associative mapping which had strong durability against conflict misses. And this is nothing but set associative mapping. And in this concept, the lines of the cache memory are subdivided into sets. Therefore, any of the main memory block, if it is mapped onto a cache line, it gains the flexibility of being mapped onto any of the lines belonging to that specific set. For an instance, suppose the block number 0 of the main memory is mapped to cache line number 0. Now as you can see, this 0th line belongs to this particular set. So the main memory block number 0 has more than one mapping option. Because apart from line number 0, it can also be mapped onto either line number 1 or 2. In other words, main memory block number 0 can be mapped onto any of the cache lines belonging to this particular set. So, set associative mapping becomes flexible because the organization provides mapping options. Now coming to the cache sets, the sets are numbered as set 0, set 1 and so on. And based on how many lines are there in every set, because all the sets are of equal size, the way is specified. That means, if one set contains k number of lines, we call it k-way set associative cache. Now this concept is borrowed from direct mapping policy. For set associative mapping technique, the physical address bit split has a set number portion from which we can determine the particular set where the main memory block will be mapped onto. So, we need not search the entire cache to find out the needed block. Rather, we only have to look for the block in the set of lines where it is supposed to reside. Therefore, the retrieval becomes easier. Also, since all the sets are of equal size, we only need k number of comparators for k-way set associative mapping. Let me show you this with the help of an illustration. Now consider this example. Here a byte addressable main memory of size 128 byte is given. The cache is of 32 byte size, the block size is given as 4 byte and the cache is a two-way set associative cache. So the physical address space that is the main memory is of 128 bytes. In other words, it's 2 to the power 7 bytes. Therefore, for physical address, we will be needing 7 bits. Now why so? Because it's a byte addressable memory. However, luckily in this case, all the units are given as bytes. Now the block size is given as 4 bytes, which can also be written as 2 square bytes. Therefore, for offset, we will be needing 2 bits. Now observe this closely, it's a byte addressable memory, right? Therefore, one word is of 1 byte. So by saying block size as 4 bytes, we are actually meaning 
each of the memory block has four different words and every word is of one byte. So it's pretty much clear to us in order to address four different memory words, we will be needing two bit places. Now let's figure out how many blocks are there inside the main memory. In order to do so, we need to divide the main memory size by the block size, which is nothing but 2 to the power 5 because 7 minus 2 is nothing but 5. So 5 bits are going to be used for block numbers. And using 5 bits, we can have 0 to 31 in total 32 that is 2 to the power 5 blocks inside the main memory. Now the cache size is given as 32 bytes which can also be written as 2 to the power 5 bytes. Now we also know the block and the line are equal in size, therefore we can find out the number of cache lines by dividing the cache size by the block size, which is nothing but 2 to the power 3 because 5 minus 2 is 3. Therefore, there are 0 to 7 that means 8 that is 2 to the power 3 lines inside the cache. Now coming to the organization of the cache, it's a two-way set associative cache. That means every set is going to contain two lines. Now let's find out the number of sets. Now number of sets can be found out by dividing the number of cache lines by the set size. Now the set size is two lines that is 2 to the power 1. Therefore, 2 to the power 2 that is 2 square because 3 minus 1 we already know is 2. So 2 bits will be used for set numbers. And we already know using 2 bits we can have 4 different sets starting from 0 up until set number 3. Therefore, from 7 bits physical address, 7 minus 2 plus 2 that is 7 minus 4 that is 3 bits will be used for tags. So this is the physical address split for this set associative cache. Now note it down, in set associative mapping the physical address split has block or line offset portion, set number field and tag field. Now let's observe the mapping procedure. Unlike direct mapping where the mapping takes place in terms of the cache lines, in set associative mapping the mapping is done with respect to the total number of sets. That means in order to find out the appropriate set number, for certain main memory block, we need to divide the block number by the total number of sets inside the cache. So the main memory block number 0 will be mapped on to 0 mod 4 because due to two-way set associativity, we figured out there are two square that means four different sets starting from the set number 0 up until the set number 3 inside the cache. So 0 mod 4 is 0. So the 0th block will be mapped onto the 0th set that gives two line options to the 0th block. That is line number 0 and line number 1. Now for the sake of this example, let's assume the 0th block is placed into the 0th line. Now coming to the main memory block number 1, the same procedure will be followed. That means we will divide the block number by the number of sets. So 1 mod 4 gives us 1 which again specifies that the main memory block number 1 will be mapped onto the cache lines belonging to the set number 1. That means the main memory block number 1 again has two different choices that is the line number 2 and line number 3. And let's assume this time the main memory block number 1 is placed into the cache line number 3. Then again for the main memory block number 2 if we repeat the same procedure that means 2 mod 4 which gives us 2 specifying that the main memory block number 2 will be mapped onto any of the lines belonging to the set number 2, which gives the main memory block number 2 two different line choices, that is line number 4 and 5. Let's assume the block number 2 is placed into the line number 5. Similarly, in case of main memory block number 3, if we repeat the same procedure, that means 3 mod 4 will result in 3, that means the main memory block number 3 can either be placed into the line number 6 or 7. And let's just say it got placed in the line number 6. Now the things will become a little bit more interesting. Let's observe what happens in case of main memory block number 4. So main memory block number 4 will be mapped onto 4 mod 4 that is set number 0. Now as you can see unlike direct memory mapping we do have a choice for the main memory block number 4 that is line number 1. And that's the beauty of the set associative mapping. So the main memory block number 4 will be placed into the line number 1. Now think about this situation. In order to find out the block number 0 or block number 4, we need not search in the entire cache. Rather, we only need to search inside the set number 0. 
So we will only need two different comparators of three bits. So now do you understand why set associative mapping is so popular? Because it combines both the advantages of direct memory mapping and associative memory mapping. So that was all for this session. I hope the concept of set associative mapping is now clear to you. In the following sessions, we will observe various numerical example problems and exciting previous year questions on this memory mapping technique. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.